everyone, Kathy Zilski here. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. Stamptember is rolling along and I have a card project today that I'm really excited to share with you featuring some charming imagery from Lawn Fawn. Now, sometimes when I get a whole set with little tiny critters, I get nervous. I get intimidated. I think to myself, can I color these? Well, it turns out if I keep it simple, the answer is and even though the set that I'm sharing today is not gonna last for long. The tips I'm going to share in this video can apply to any set with lots of little critters. My adorable Lawn Fawn Critter Card is coming up next. Balloons, they're for Stamp Timber. So here's a look at the card I'm sharing today. And I have to tell you, I am so proud of myself for the coloring that I did today. I'm getting more confident, and my secret, I keep it simple. So here's a look at the exclusive Stamp Timber collaboration. It is called Seasons Tweetings. This is a huge six by eight stamp set full of the cutest little birds and little accoutrement and greetings. And I have the dies for this as well. So there are dies to cut everything out. It is really adorable. I'm going to be using Simon Says Stamp Embossing Ink and some silver powder and a whole host of Copics. And I will have everything linked below if you're curious. And I also try to remember to keep them out when I'm coloring. Some simple cardstock and a few other things as we go. So let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to do is start stamping out my images. Now here's what I do when I have a stamp set like this that has a ton of images. A lot of times I'll see something like this and I instantly get nervous, like I don't really know what to do. But what I always try to remind myself is this, start simple. So I'm gently laying down the strand of lights. I've got my log down, I'm just picking one. And then I thought I would choose three birds. I'm not gonna try to overstamp. You know what I mean by that? For me, whenever I try to do too much, I call that overstamping. It's the same concept as you know trying to uh, cash creative checks that my body's not ready to write. I, I'm gonna keep it very simple with just a few. I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black. This is a Copic friendly ink. I'm gonna ink up my stamps and I'm going to stamp them down. Now this is Nina Solar White Classic Crest in the 110 pound. I just wanted something nice and sturdy for coloring and die cutting. The impression looked great. So it's time to start planning out the coloring. But first I grabbed a panel die because I knew I wanted to cut this panel down a bit and not use the full strand. I marked off the lights that I wasn't going to use just because sometimes when I'm so focused on coloring, I forget where I'm at. Now I've been changing out the nibs on a lot of my markers. I will take the chisel side out and put in these little fine tip nibs. They are kind of hard to find right now, but the reason I'm doing this is because I am not very good with coloring. And what I mean by that is I don't really stay in the lines with the brush tips. So by changing out my nibs, it gives me this harder, firmer, little tiny tip that allows me to color with a little more success. Now I have no idea. I have no idea what's gonna happen when a pen runs dry. Like if I pull out the brush tip to refill, is it gonna ruin the tip? I don't know. And if that happens, you know what I'll do? I'll just replace the marker. I don't color a lot, so my markers seem to last a really long time. I haven't had, well, I've only had a couple go dry. But anyway, that said, I'm starting with my reds and these two colors I know work pretty well together. So I'm working in order because I thought to myself, if I create a rainbow order for the lights, then I can also do the birds in a similar rainbow order. And you'll see as we get a little bit further into this. I, I thought it would make sense to do that. And it also helps me to create some limits within which to color. And for me, I need limits. I need to not know that every marker is at my disposal. So I narrow it down before I start. And even though I'm working with this rainbow array, it's still a very limited and focused approach for coloring in my images. So birdie here in the middle is going to pick up the yellow, which is going to be towards the center of my strand. And again, I'm going in. I thought the beaks would look cute also in yellow. And now I'm moving on to my greens. 
And this is in the center, so I thought, well, I'm going to take that same green and I'm going to color the little bird's hat so that the yellow and the green are mirrored in the center of the strand and in the center of my design. Very simple coloring. You know, I don't really have a lot of um, go-to combos, but these that I'm using today, I actually went back to other projects that I had done, looked at my supply list in the videos that I had shared, and just used those again. So I'm starting to pick up a little bit about, oh, these work together, and oh, these ones don't. So I have a few now that I know, and that's only taken me three years of, of, of coloring. <laughs> Hmm. But I will put a card up in the upper corner. If you're interested in checking out a video that I did where there's a free download below in the information box to download a Copic coloring chart. It's a chart designed to help you practice and hopefully come up with colors that work really well for you as well. Moving on to the purple. The purple was a little, I love this uh, VO1. It's very light, but then when I brought in the VO4, I thought, ooh, that's a... That's a little darker. Harder to create a blend. So I just touched the tip of the darker with my lighter marker to kind of create something that was a little closer. And I thought that looked fine. Moving on to the browns, I thought his antlers would look nice in the brown. Laying down a single color and then bringing in a little darker. And again, I gravitate towards the markers that do have those tips because I think this is hard to get into. Um, this is a small space, and for me, that's usually when I go out of the lines. Now, I do have a colorless blender pen off camera, which I always keep for mistakes, because I, I love it. If you let your colored area dry, then you can come in with a colorless blender and sort of push back the color, and it lifts it out and works almost like an eraser. So to finish this branch, I'm just laying down three different colors of brown to have one be lighter and one be darker and one be even darker. Really simple. I thought maybe a little shading would work, but honestly, half the time, I have no idea what I'm doing. But I thought that looked good. So branch done. The final step is to color in the bird bodies. I am sticking with two warm grays. These are my go-to colors for pretty much any critter that I don't want to make a color, if that makes sense. I just love the warm grays. They are among the first markers I ever purchased when I started Copic coloring. And so I'm laying down zero in the entire bird and shading in the side of the bird. That's it. It just adds a subtle bit of texture. That's exactly what I wanted for the birds. And I think it looks great. Again, simple not taking away from the rest of the color on the images. Next, I'm going to take all of the dies for these images and run them through my die cut machine. I taped everything into place and started popping things out and I was very excited because the birds looked fantastic. Okay, they, they cut out great. Popped out the lights, the lights looked pretty good too. I, I wasn't quite sure if I had it laid down perfectly straight. Um, I did notice that I didn't quite get a clean cut on the middle light, so I just snipped that off with my scissors. But the branch kind of bummed me out. I totally misaligned the branch and it was bugging me. And I thought, it's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I changed my mind. So I re-stamped it and recolored it because it's so easy to do this coloring, right? This is super simple. So instead, I took a light piece of gray copy paper die cut the branch and framed it out. This is something I do when I'm having trouble getting a good cut. I just create a template because once you have a template and it's framed out, you can pop your die back into that opening, tape it in place, and it you can feel it like it locks. Well, it doesn't lock, but you can sense when it's in there. And then go ahead and cut again. Nine out of 10 times, you're going to get a better cut. I learned this a long time ago from my friend Gina K of Gina K Designs and Stamp TV, and that looks so much better. So sometimes you gotta do it. You gotta take that extra step. Next, I'll cut out a panel from some Nina Solar White Classic Crest. This is still the 110 pound, because this is where I'm going to assemble all of my elements. And I kind of got this whole design set up, snipped off the extra lights that I wasn't using, and I like the idea that that can sort of extend off the panel. 
And now it's time to stamp. So I brought that design into my Misty, brought in a creative corner just to get that first sentiment, the seasons, because I'm going to do seasons tweetings. I wanted that to be lined up perfectly. And then I brought the tweetings to press it right onto the Misty door. And I just double checked it to make sure that was close enough and it looked perfectly lined up. I also picked up the um, fa la 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 at the top because I thought that would be cute as well. I'm going to prep the card panel with the embossing magic to remove all the static. I just turned it here so it'd be a little easier to see. Inking it up with embossing ink and then giving that a nice even press on the misty door. Not too hard because I didn't want to smush the type. I'm sprinkling on some embossing powder. This is uh, Sterling from Brutus Monroe. Getting a little more on there, letting that set up, and then tapping it off. I had a little extra powder, so I just took a dry brush and brushed it away. I'll heat up my heat tool so it's nice and hot and quickly melt the powder so that it is all shiny and silver. Oh, looks so good, so pretty. I love silver embossing powder. Now I'm going to pop this panel inside of a book while I do the rest of the things. It's got a little bit of warping and yes, I'm going to use foam tape to flatten it out as well, but you know what? This is a trick I do. I just stick it in a book, stick it in a book, put it under something heavy and work on other things like prepping the card base. I'm using Audrey blue cardstock. I'm really obsessed with this color of cardstock right now. It's very bright and cheery and bold. And this will be a USA two card top folding four and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches tall. And here's something I wanted to show because I don't show this and people ask, what do you put on the inside of your cards, Kathy? Well, I put greetings that come in the sets and here I've pulled one of the greetings from the set. Now I do use my Misty for this as well. And here's why this is so cool. You can open up your card and it can hang outside of the Misty door just like that. It doesn't hurt the card at all. It doesn't mar it or bend it or anything. And so this is so great, especially if you're creating an assembly line and you're stamping a whole bunch of sentiments on the inside. You can use your Misty for the inside sentiments and it works so slick. Look at that from our home to yours. I just wanted to show that because I, I don't often show the insides of cards. Now I've got some thin foam squares on the back of the branch. And I'm going to pop that up right there on the panel. And then I'm going to trim off the excess with my paper trimmer. Just get it lined up there on the edge and cut. I've got some foam tape on the back of the panel, which will also help it to flatten out. And I'm just popping that down right on the card base with that gorgeous framing margin space. I also have little thin foam squares that I've cut in half to pop up the light strand. Oh, so cute. And I also like how the strand hangs into the margin. Now I'm going to pop up my birds on the branch and I actually used a thicker foam square on their heads so that they would have the proper loft over the branch. And then I thought to myself, should I do it? Should I add shine to the bulbs? I was really torn because I didn't want to mess this up. So I want to show you something. I did a sample of this card before I filmed, which I do quite often because I'm never 100% sure that what I'm going to do is working. <laughs> so I thought I'd do it on this sample card. And as soon as I got started, I thought, oh, Kathy, you can, this is, this is in your wheelhouse. So I really love how this is going to add shine, especially when it dries, because it will dry clear. And I always keep a toothpick too, just like if you were moving frosting around on a cookie, if you don't get it down perfectly, you can just spread it around. And when that dries, it's going to look fantastic. So now you can see how I followed the rainbow order in the strand for how I colored and positioned my birds on the branch. I did go ahead and add the crystalline drops to the card that I did on camera as well, because I just think it's super cute. I can do these things. You are really cute. No, seriously, dude, you're so cute. And remember, if you love this Snaptember set, don't sleep on it. All links below the video. 
Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.